Hi, this is Dr. Fast here, and in this video, I will talk about the requirements that's needed to use and operate this Harbor Freight brake fluid bleeder. And you can pick it up on sale for about $30, very inexpensive. Now, I did do a video uh, last year on using this same device to bleed the brakes on my vehicle. And after I posted that video, I had several viewers asking about the requirements to operate this device. And some of them did mention that they're using a smaller compressor. Uh, somebody asked about a pancake size compressor. They also asked about what compressor I'm using. So I'm going to go over all that in this video. Let's first talk about the bleeding device itself. As you can see, there's a container here. This is a 34 ounce container that holds your old fluid. There's a handle here. When you pull the trigger, it will allow the vacuum to activate and suck up the old fluid using this hose right here. At the end of the hose, there is a rubber fitting which you fit over the caliper's bleeder screw. Once you fit that over, squeeze the trigger and it will draw the old fluid into this container. There are no adjustments you need to do. Basically, you close this up. Connect this end to the compressor and then you can begin using it. Right now I'm going to connect my compressor to this device. And when I pull the trigger, you can hear the vacuum. Here is the part that gets a little confusing. If you look at the user guide, on the first page here, under the specifications, it tells you that the operating PSI is 90 to 120 PSI. However, it does not give you any specification for the CFM that's required to operate this device. Now, it's important to know what is the CFM requirement for this tool. However, as I pointed out, the Harbor Freight Manual doesn't tell you. And what the CFM is, is cubic feet per minute. And that tells you the rate of airflow this tool requires to operate properly. It's important to know that your compressor also has a CFM rating that will tell you what kind of tools it can operate. And without that value, it's really hard to tell if your compressor can actually supply enough air to operate this device. Now I know there's another company on the market that makes a product that's also a vacuum brake bleeding kit and it's called MightyVac. And I printed out their specification on their product. Now, this is not the Harbor Freight unit, but it gives us an idea of what is a CFM requirement for a similar product like this. It tells you that the working pressure is 60 to 150 PSI, and the air consumption at 90 PSI is 4.3 CFM. To make a very wild guess, I would say this device probably use something between 4.0 CFM to 4.5 CFM. So let me show you the compressor I'm using in my garage to operate this bleeder tool. Now, this compressor you're looking at is a DeWalt model number D55168. The tank is a 15 gallon tank and I've had this for about four to five years. And let me bring the camera to the top of the compressor and it actually has the specs listed for this compressor. The tank has a maximum of 200 PSI. The motor is 1.8 horsepower and as you can see it's a 15 gallon tank and the top right hand corner number is 5.4 SCFM at 90 PSI. Now the SCFM is more of a standardized measurement because when you compare that to the CFM, the CFM measurement does not take into consideration any of the atmospheric pressure, air temperature, or humidity. However, if your compressor only has a CFM measurement, it's still a good guide to let you know what the performance is on that compressor. As for the setting on my compressor, if you look at my regulator pressure, I have this set to 100 PSI. And the reason for that is because the air outlet comes out of here and it goes to a splitter. 
And on this splitter I have another regulator which I set this to 90 PSI. From here it goes out to the hose reel, out to here, and connecting to the tool. Now to give you some example of different style of compressor and the size of the compressor and what kind of CFM or SCFM rating they can provide, I went on to the Sears website and printed out several uh, different type of uh, compressor they sell. Here is a 20 gallon 1.5 horsepower horizontal air compressor with a maximum tank pressure of 150 PSI. And as for the SCFM rating, at 90 PSI it will deliver 3.8 SCFM. If you're using this compressor at 40 PSI, it will deliver 5.1 SCFM. And that's typical of these two numbers. Whenever the PSI goes up, the SCFM will go down and vice versa. So that's why the 40 PSI has a higher SCFM rating. So given this compressor can output 90 PSI at 3.8 SCFM, I would say it's probably at the lower end limit of operating the brake bleeding tool. Anything less than this, it will probably struggle to operate. Example of a different compressor. This is a 33 gallon, 1.7 horsepower vertical air compressor. The tank holds a maximum of 165 PSI. And if you look at the specification, I ran a space on the printout on the first page, but as you can see, at 90 PSI can deliver 5.1 SCFM. And at 40 PSI can deliver 6.8 SCFM. Here is a much smaller compressor. This is a 6 gallon, 1.1 horsepower pancake compressor. And you see these at many hardware stores. And the tank holds a maximum of 150 PSI. And here in the description, the rating for the SCFM is 2.8 SCFM at 90 PSI. So after showing you some of the less expensive and smaller compressor, I want to show you something that is very good quality. Here is a compressor made by Ingersoll Rand. This is their 20 gallon, 2 horsepower vertical compressor. As you can see, the spec already tells you that it delivers 5.2 CFM. And also, if you look at the bottom of the specification, also lists the CFM at 90 PSI at 5.2 and CFM at 135 PSI at 4.6. So, for those of you who did not see my video from last year, I will put a short clip right now so you can see how I use this tool to bleed the brakes on my vehicle. I will also put the link to that video in my description so if you want to see the whole entire video you can click on that link. I have the compressor connected to this bleeding kit here and on the dust cap for the bleeder go ahead and remove this dust cap. You need a wrench that's a 10 millimeter to open up the bleeder screw here. Here is the nipple that you connect the bleeding kit to your caliper. Now if you find that the nipple might be leaking a little bit of air, you can always put a little bit of silk glide, just a little bit, and they'll help seal. So go ahead and loosen this. Now keep in mind, you will have to make sure the reservoir is filled at all times. You do not want that to be empty. So let me open this up. And I'm going to pull the trigger on here. Make sure you check the reservoir, make sure it's topped off. Tighten it back up. And just keep bleeding until the fluid coming out is going to be clear. So let me show you the brake fluid that came out. This 
video helped answer any questions that some of you had on what is required to operate this tool properly. And of course, if you still have any questions, leave a comment below. And don't forget to click on the like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.